And for teams who are willing or ready to invest in creating their own design system, right? Um, what are some principles that they should keep in mind coming in and where should they actually start? Sure. Um, I think the first thing is you know, make sure you're clear on why you want your design system. Um, you know, I think it may not make that much sense for kind of very small teams or very fast moving teams to do it. Um, the, the impetus to build a design system is usually I want to get kind of this knowledge out of a designer's mind so that someone else can take it and use it to build something new. Um, so, but if you are at that point and you're, you've decided, yeah, either I have like external partners that I need to serve that need to be able to understand like what the structure that we're building is, uh, or you've hit that kind of point of scale where that makes sense. Um, you have to recognize that it is not like a, I write it and it's done kind of effort. Yeah. Um, it's definitely something that needs ongoing support. And the writing down part is actually like really important. And it kind of hurts, right? Because like we've, we've gotten to the point where like if you were practicing design like a decade ago, you're like, oh, okay, detailed specs. I remember these. I got all the red lines and I got a Word doc and here's my table. And then we were kind of in this wonderful age of like close collaboration and prototyping and all of that where it's like, no, I'm just going to, you know, one-on-one -on -one work really closely either with myself or the, the engineering team where we're just going to work this out and it's not, you know, throw the spec. It's not like create this stupid like artifact that's like, I don't know, I think people look at written specs and they're like, well, this is like stone tools for dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. But for design systems, um, if you don't write it down, if it's still like captured up in the head of the designer and not externalized in some form, then you haven't really captured the system yet. Um, you, your goal is to create something that lives independent of the people that created it that can be taken like almost as if there's like a wall where like you don't get access to the people that made it anymore. Mm. How, what do you need to capture so that anyone can take it and build with the un all the understanding they need to kind of effectively translate that system. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously like an incredibly lofty goal that like we're still aspiring towards. Um, but I think that is the goal, especially when you're trying to kind of adopt at scale, yeah. where I can't have the pleasure of like sitting down and talking to everyone who's building a material design app. Right. Like they, their understanding is gonna come from reading our guidelines and you know, watching our I.O. videos and looking at how other people have realized it. That last one's a little dangerous because it comes this echo chamber of, well, here's how somebody interpreted this doc, right. and I'm just going to kind of keep feeding into their understanding of it as well. Um, so kind of making sure you're ready to nurture it, making sure that you're willing to like write it down. And, and write it down doesn't just mean text. Like it's, it's the videos, it's all the visual examples. Uh, examples are really important, uh, showing not just the rule but or the guideline, but how does it apply in, in context? Um, how does it get used? Um, Counterexamples are really important, um, just like with any kind of brand style guide, just like not this way, not this way. Uh, those can be, they can be so expedient yeah. compared to trying to specify all of the rules. Sometimes the counterexample is just the best way.